Hello, welcome back. This is episode 25 of the Hybrid Ministries Tech Forum, where we'll discuss all matters relating to the challenges and opportunities of streaming worship services and, and other events live from your premises. Um, we are now back on our weekly schedule, so um, here we go. And whether you're considering a one-way broadcast or interactively engaging worship, your online congregants' experience should be top of mind as you plan your services. While they may come for the community, the message, the music, the quality of your presentation, and the level of engagement that you offer will determine how long your viewers will watch and whether they come back, how often they'll return. So if you're with us live, you're an important part of our show. Your questions and comments help to produce the show and steer the topics that we discuss on this and future episodes. If you're with us uh, live on YouTube, um, get a portable device ready for a QR code that I'm going to put up in a moment that uh, will lead you to the place where you can ask questions and make comments. The way you contribute to the show is not on Zoom or YouTube's chat channels. Um, they don't really fit our needs. So we are using Discord, at least for now, and we use it all week long because it's our private version of social media and so much more. Um, if you find the show valuable, you'll really appreciate the Discord. In it, you'll find a category named Live Show with channels under it named Live Questions and Live Chat. So um, if you're not already set up on the Discord, there are several other ways you can uh, engage with us. If you're with us live on Zoom, you can stick around after the, we're done with this show and participate in the post show where we'll have casual conversation with open microphones. And if you have uh, value to offer our viewers, if you are doing uh, web streaming and you can offer maybe a different perspective or experience, then you can actually join our panel. Get here just an hour early before showtime, and we'll check you in. If you want to invite other people to the show, you can find the Zoom and Discord registration information on our Facebook page, where we also post um, upcoming episodes. We also have a brand new Facebook group that's been put up, um, so look for that, and um, we can engage there as well. So who are we? We are a growing international and multi-faith community representing congregations of all sizes and faiths. For the topics that we discuss here, religious denominations should be transparent. We are talking about technology for worship, not worship for technology. We all want to communicate with our communities as effectively as we can, and so we are here to help each other up our game. And we're just one in a related set of communities that our panelists and I contribute to dedicated to all flavors of media production and all levels. So if you're hungry for more, look for links in the Discord under Related Shows. Media production, even for worship, is a rich and deep area of interest and continuing study. You can learn one way of accomplishing a task, and then you'll find that there are multi multiple ways that, you, that could offer you create, different creative opportunities, improve your results, enrich your personal satisfaction, and make your work more interesting. So we will have training opportunities for you. Last season, we were running an audio training program that um, Mark Plukas was, uh, was doing, uh, along with myself, and that was running on Mondays at 3 o'clock, and uh, it's still kind of continuing. Um, we need to check in with Mark, who's not here tonight, um, to see if he what he has planned. But we are going to be expanding that because... As we'll find out later tonight, I suspect, audio is a big and important part of how we do live streaming and is not the easiest thing in the world to get right. So we are going to dive into that further um, and conduct some trainings and look at mixers and look at mix minuses and how to get Zoom into the room without feedback, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to uh, do that. So... Um, and we're looking at maybe expanding our training program into other areas like video switching and camera technique. And we're going to be talking about workflow is like, how do we get the information that we need to do our tasks in video production and get them on time and have them complete enough so that we can do a really good job. So 
Um, and so now that we're back on our weekly schedule, we are looking to do some improvements into how we do the show. Um, so we'll be making some uh, announcements soon, so stay tuned. So today on our panel, we have uh, Jay Paul in Maryland and Leo Mendel in London. We have Michael Kyer in Seattle. Um, and who else is here? We have Russ Tadeo in Georgia. Um, so thank you all for coming and for joining in. So um, what's everybody been up to this summer? Um, you've been installing new equipment. How's it been going for you? Um, have you had uh, uh, training or been learning on your own? Um, how have things been working out? I see um, various people posting in the uh, church tech uh, Facebook groups that and are on our Discord that they've done, you know, one or two or maybe even more live streams from the sanctuary or from outside on the grounds so far and have had various levels of success. So let's hear um, let's hear about that and let's go to let's start out with uh, with Russ. Tell us um, how far you've gotten and, and how things are going. Well, thank you, Marty. Uh, first of all, let me just say thank you for the whole hybrid uh, platforms um, discussion that we've been having here for all this time. Uh, it actually has been really, really helpful in, in lots of ways. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I would have navigated this. Um, I'm not an expert in, uh, in AV by any means, uh, so this has been invaluable, really. Um, so uh, starting from back a year ago last April, so what is that, approaching eight, 18 months ago or thereabouts now? Something like that. We, uh, we've been streaming services, uh, a couple from the, the church sanctuary, then from uh, our upstairs bedroom, and then we changed bedrooms. So, you know, we had to change a venue. And, uh, and then finally, uh, back to the, uh, to the sanctuary for a couple of weeks before we actually had one in-person service while we were streaming uh, that one day. And then uh, as things spiked up here in, uh, in the uh, Atlanta, Georgia area, uh, we went back to totally, totally streaming, although we're still in the sanctuary. Since then, I've acquired a lot of equipment that has been discussed in this forum, um, which has been great. And uh, just to kind of go through that a little bit, just to show you what we ended up choosing, uh, I'd like to share a screen here, share a photo of that. So let's see here. Ah, there we go. Can you all see that okay? Okay, great. Yes, we so, can. Yes. So, thank you. This is a this is a look at uh, at what used to be the sound corner of the uh, of the sanctuary, and that uh, equipment rack on the right. That was the sum total of sound equipment, uh, pretty much that we that we had. None of that is in use anymore. So that's basically uh, just being a stand for my uh, for our, our media computer, uh, which is on top of it at this point. Um, but uh, so I guess uh, right dead center in the middle of that is the new mixer that we got. And that is a, uh, an Allen and Heath used analog mixer, uh, which uh, when, uh, when it came up, when somebody mentioned it, uh, I, I posted that around our congregation and people who had any information about mixers said, no, Allen and Heath, good, do that. Doesn't matter if it's analog, that's what we did. And it's been, been working fine. So. Uh, that's what we're up to now. I know that there's uh, been a lot of talk about the digital mixers, and they have their own really good aspects. To them. For us, this was about five hundred dollars, and it, it had a lot of capabilities, including a number of auxiliary outputs that allow us to do the mix minus that you know helps us here. Um, the um, right next to that, to the left, you can probably uh, pick out the all those uh, the little lit area. Of, a uh, little lit rectangle, which is uh, um, a Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro, which has been invaluable. That's been really wonderful. Uh, it's made uh, me, anyway, look like I semi know what I'm doing with its with its slow cuts and all that uh, transitions that you're able to do with it. Um, and plus, just being able to see all the cameras, uh, what all the inputs are at once, and we're not even using um, nearly all of its capabilities. So, you know, looking forward to what else you know we can do with that. We're actually using um, that uh, ATEM Mini Pro as the audio input as well. So the audio comes out analog from that mixing board and then goes into that. And uh, while it took a little getting used to how to set it up, it, it's worked, I think, uh, pretty well. 
um, just recently, um, I bought, uh, we bought two new computers, uh, one a Dell 8940, XPS 8940, uh, which is about $1,000, which uh, is now the Zoom computer, which has been uh, very solid. Um, the other one was a media computer, and that's the one that's on top of the sound rack on the right. And that's much uh, a much more weak device, a GK, a B-Link a GK55, um, with like eight uh, eight gigs of uh, of RAM and um, I think 256 gigs of uh, of SSD. Uh, it's uh, hopefully it was going to do what it, we wanted it to do, and it's doing fine. Although the first one died a terrible death suddenly uh, after using it for a couple of weeks, but its replacement is hanging in there. So. So we have that weak one doing uh, doing the media, um, and uh, I needn't probably go into that, but I assume that it will also be generating any videos that we wanna show might be coming out of there. We also might be using by uh, sharing with the Zoom function you know, on the Dell computer, which is on the left side. On top of that uh, cute little uh, uh, wooden box from Joanne uh, is, a, uh, uh, is the monitor for the, the ATEM. Mini Pro, uh, again, which has given us a lot of uh, a good uh, good insight. Um, what you can't see, and I wish I'd taken a photo of uh, behind me, um, is a um, is a lar a tall cabinet that on top of which has two cameras, and then a, a third camera which is over uh, near more the center of the rear of the room. And between those three cameras, uh, we basically um, zoom in on the on a pulpit shot. Um, down below where the chalice is uh, and a chalice table is uh, with one of the other cameras. So it's a little bit of a wider shot. And then finally, uh, one that stays mostly focused on where the uh, minister is doing um, her homily from. And that's a kind of where we start from on, on most days. And um, it's been, this is a very do-it-yourself kind of congregation. And uh, so it's, it's just been interesting just navigating it all and uh, also you know, trying to stay within a reasonable budget. And, and just to that end, uh, let me say that at this point, uh, we spent about $4,000, which you know, considering all the equipment that we acquired and all the capabilities that we now have, I, I think that's a, a very reasonable amount. And, uh, and I don't think we have, for our, our near-term uh, objectives. I, I don't think we have a lot more to go. There's a lot more we could do. Uh, so, for example, uh, in the distance away from where this photo is taken is a wall on which uh, we have been projecting um, uh, using a, a slide projector uh, to uh, to do things, to show things, everything from lyrics to uh, videos and various other things uh, that has basically been showing on a painted wall, uh, which is actually, I mean, from the people that I've talked to in the congregation has actually worked out pretty well but is it as good as it could be no no certainly not um and uh and the cable that goes back to that point was run through the wall along the side of the room more than 10 years ago because that was before i got there and it turned out to be a really nice vga cable which is not ideal but you know there it is it's there already uh, ultimately i may uh use some of the other technology that y'all have made me aware of, which, for example, might use the Ethernet, the SDI over Ethernet, maybe to, to do that uh, at some point. But right now, uh, we're using all the all this fancy gear to be able to send good images both to uh, to Zoom and everybody watching remotely and also, uh, you know, to show up on that wall. Um, and then the one other part of this, and uh, I don't uh, want to go on too long, but the one other part of this, of course, is uh, the, the having remote participants show up in the room. And so we've done the audio part of that um, in, uh, in past weeks, and that's actually worked out pretty well. Um, and we've had no feedback issues, especially with the mix minus and so on that y'all have made you know, possible for us to do. Uh, and now I now am able to, using two splitters and an HDMI switch, <laughs> I'm not able to bring, I'm now able to bring that Zoom image in the room so that somebody who's who's uh, doing a reading remotely, let's say, participating in some way, will now show up in the room as well. Even though it's really only us who are running the service that are in the room right now, you know, we'll be ready when, uh, when the time comes. 
Uh, I think that is most of what I wanted to say about this, and I'm happy to, to entertain any questions. And, and again, of course, I'm, I'm uh, again very thankful for y'all's expertise in, in bringing this all about because I don't know how we would have gotten here, you know, this far without uh, your, all your suggestions. Well, you're so welcome. Um, it makes me very, uh, very happy and, and proud to see that uh, you've been able to do all this as a uh, you know, um, with our with our assistance and help, perhaps. Um, does anybody on the panel have any questions? I think it's so great. I think it's great. I was just, I mean, I remember having the discussions with Russ when we started this whole process, and you know, it's. Uh, I don't think there's a. I don't think there's ever a right way is it like there's never a this is the only way you can do this or the um and i think the biggest thing i find with all of this is um it's a journey and and, and sometimes you as you say something lands on your lap that's going to fix this bit um or it's going to get you from to the next point um you know we we suggested some mixes i remember at the time russ and it doesn't you know it doesn't really matter sometimes you just fix the yeah, it's like you, so you don't walk into a house and go, right, this is exactly it. We'll have it all done in two weeks. Uh, what you normally do is you go, let's start with one room. And when you go and uh, hit, hit the drywall uh, in one room, you find a problem that you've got to fix somewhere else. So, so your journey changes all the time. So it's great. It's great. Yeah, I do remember those conversations, right? We had uh, with, with uh, Russ and Jan, we had... Uh, two conferences with with you good folks um and uh we, we we were having a bit of some difficulties trying to navigate the particulars of your room i, re I recall but um glad to see that you have been able to work things out so well and um what uh, what have you found to be like the particular challenges the uh We've had uh, just understanding how the technology, how these these complex devices interact with each other, has been about that really the trickiest part. Uh, like we were, for example, having some strange echo coming out, uh, coming back from Zoom that was happening. And you know, I, I was a help. Uh, there was another uh, fellow in there with me. We were both, you know, trying to figure it out and. You know, I think what I finally realized uh, is that it was a combination of of leaving some things in the mixer unmuted, but also Zoom was also contributing to it in some ways that we, we didn't really anticipate. And since I started uh, muting everything that wasn't immediately in use, um, we haven't had the problem. But then I also heard some things uh, since then about issues that involve you know Zoom as well. Not sure if anybody else has heard that, but I think that was uh, that was the biggest challenge. I think. Yeah, Zoom can uh, you know when when you get to Zoom updates, you never know exactly, or it's hard to tell exactly what's changed. They do they do post a change log. Um, it's not the easiest thing to find, but <laughs> <laughs> but you can find it and and see what they've changed and and what settings you know they have added or or changed or something. So, um, but um, the biggest problem has been has been um, mix minuses and sound from Zoom when doing a in two way interactive, um, getting from the speakers into the open microphones in the room that and that can cause an echo that have challenged some people. So, um, seems like you've worked that out and you've got your camera positions down. It, it, it looks like you've got some good. You're getting some good shots. Um, I understand that you, you know, during the next phase, perhaps you'll be looking to upgrade your cameras, which is fine, uh, which is good. You know, we, one of the one of the things that, um, you know, I always always relish and, and try to encourage people is that, uh, you know, we, we we figure out how to do something, and. When we're done with it, we we tend to look back and say, okay, well, what worked? What didn't work? If I had to do this again, what would I do differently? And when it comes to church services, you know, there are a large number of services that are essentially very similar and maybe even the same in terms of their 
order of service. You've got people speaking from the pulpit. You've got choir. You've got a piano. Um, you know, a simple service. That's what you got, and you can do that three or four days in a row, or Sundays in a row, before you get to a different kind of service. And so each each time you do it, you can look for ways to make improvements, look for ways to do things differently, or or um, ways to make it sound better, different microphone position, different kind of settings for dynamics or EQ, things to um, make improvements. And, and it's, it's, an, it's a journey. It's a constantly evolving thing. And, and that's part of what makes this, what makes this fun. Anybody else? Oh, yes. Um, we have two questions here. Uh, Bruce McNair from uh, Westport, Connecticut. Um, can you talk about the operators and their skill levels? And um, I'll follow that with Anders uh, Hornblad's question from Freeland, Washington. How many people does it take to run your service? Both, both really good questions. The uh, what up until uh, putting the the um, putting it all together in that corner of the room, uh, and and then trying to make uh, Zoom available, the uh, per, remote participants available in the room. Pri and until then, mm -hmm. I could still do it almost by myself. But once that happened, it became clear that uh, it we needed a second person. Uh, you can, and, and that second person is also running AV um, in some way. And so the way we've been sort of splitting it up is with one person looking after the audio and the other one doing the camera switching, and if necessary, to make an adjustment to the camera you know, itself. But there's a third person who is acting as Zoom manager as well. So, so you know, you want to consider that person as part of the team because what we do is put things in the chat when the surf, uh, service starts, for example, that, that tells people where they are, um, where the order of service is at, uh, and things like that, and, and anything about what they need to do. And, um, and they serve other functions as well as the, as the service goes along, including if you have remote participants spotlighting the right person and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, so they're an important part of the team uh, if you're going to make it as diverse as that. Uh, so I would say that um, two people actually running a V plus the a Zoom person probably what is going to be what it takes, uh, um, except for maybe those things, as you were saying, Marty, that are so simple, you know, in a particular week that, uh, you know, that it, it might not be necessary that maybe one person could could run AV while the other is doing Zoom. Um, but I think I think three is probably, you know, total is probably the best number. Great, great. Well, thank you, Russ. Thank you for that. So we've got uh, a few more um, people who are going to talk to us just to let our, our viewers know. Um, we've got Leo Mendel, who is going to talk to us about um, synagogues that he's been working with. We have Jay Paul from Columbia, Maryland, who's going to talk to us about the Unitarian Church in Columbia. And we have Michael Kyer, who's going to talk to us about um, what his outdoor service in Olympia, Washington. And um, I have one more question here. Um, can you, from Steve in Amherst, uh, Massachusetts, um, can you explain Mix Minus? Um, and are you doing live music over Zoom? Um, so we will get to the live music question. Uh, Russ, are you doing music? Uh, the music that we're doing up to now has, well, yeah, yeah, it's almost all been recorded and it was music that we had recorded in previous services back before this all started. And I, you know, excerpted those files out or that, those, uh, that information out and then you know, I've been playing it since. Uh, but we also have a pianist uh, and the pianist has been playing uh, in the last few weeks has been playing live. Great. Okay. So before we get to Michael, who go next. Um, let me let me talk a little bit about Mix Minus. We've covered this on prior shows, and you can find the find that show in uh, on the Discord. You can find out which one um, which one it was because they are they are listed. And so, what Mix Minus is? So you have uh, on your audio board, you have all of your sources coming in, and you have them. You're mixing them and balancing them to go out to your loudspeakers in the room. 
your mixing and balancing to go out to um, the stream, whether it be Zoom or YouTube or whatever. And then you may also have a um, an overflow room somewhere on the premises. Um, and then you also have, perhaps, you may have stage monitors for musicians to hear. But not everybody wants to hear the same mix and the same balance. And so, for example, um, musicians don't want to hear the same mix that comes out of the loudspeakers for the audience because it's too much information. They only need to hear certain things for them to be able to play well with other musicians. When we're talking about streaming, um, no, let's talk about the room first. So uh, within the room, if you have, um, if you're the kind of church or, or, or congregation that does live music, and maybe you have an electric guitar, you have drums or percussion, and some of those things can be really loud on stage. And so you don't need to re-amplify them in the main loudspeakers for the room because it would just be too overpowering. So what you're going to have in your loudspeakers is primarily vocals and any instrument that's just not loud enough by itself, like a ukulele, flute, that kind of thing. Well, if you put that mix out on the stream, you're not going to hear a well-balanced mix because those people are not hearing the loud instruments on stage. So you need to do a separate mix um, for the stream that is more well-balanced for people who are not in the room. Now, when you're doing two-way conferencing, if you're streaming out services and then you have a portion of the service or maybe somebody who couldn't make it who is presenting during the service for the service, maybe they're doing a reading or a story or something, but they're at home and you want to pipe them in. So you have a screen to show them on in the sanctuary and you're bringing them in, uh, they're bringing their audio in and playing them in the speakers. If you don't set up your mixer to prevent their sound from going back out to them, right, then that's going to create a feedback loop. And so we describe ways to um, minus their own audio from the mix. So it's a full mix minus the Zoom audio that's coming in and preventing it from going out. So that's a, um, a brief discussion of mix minus. And um, we cover that in, in way more um, uh, detail on, on our previous shows. I think it was episode 14, maybe, um, but you can find it in the Discord. There's a channel called uh, uh, Show Recordings, and every show is is got the topics listed there. So let's go to Michael Kyer. So Michael, you, um, you've been posting about this. You did, um, I saw you did a site survey. You, this is outside on your, in your parking lot. You did a site survey, took some video of that. So your entire uh, tech crew and your worship crew, uh, worship team knew the location. And then you did a, um, a rehearsal, I saw. So people came down, you set up equipment. And then you had the final service. So, so tell us all about that. How well did that go? Sure. Um, I'm going to actually take a second and double with what Russ said as far as what this uh, forum's been able to do. Um, it's been a lifeline for real. Um, we've gotten a lot of information that we needed. Um, and it's just been a, a, my go-to source. Um, so I'm Russ, I'm, I'm right with you on that. Um, so yeah, so we set this up. This is our annual, um, in gathering and water communion. And, um, so I'm going to share a picture of the setup, um, real quick. All right. Can everybody see that? Should be. Yes, it. we see it. Okay. So, um, so left to right, we've got our soundboard over there, um, a speaker on a pedestal, TV stand, um, another speaker, another TV, and then our Yeti mic in the middle. Um, so this isn't the final arrangement. We wound up adding an extra camera, um, and then there were another um, set of condenser mics for the choir um, arranged. But basically, all of the microphones for the speakers and the choir all went to the soundboard, out the speakers. 
And then we captured it with the Yeti, um, which is what we sent to Zoom. So um, we've got a tech team of about five people. And so we had two on-site technicians and then three um, fully online that were um, double checking all of the, the Zoom management pieces of this. Um, we had a pretty simple service. We didn't add a bunch, we didn't add any video. We didn't add any um, interaction um, with the on and offline groups. It was just straight camera switches um, and they were static positions. We didn't do any Zooms. These, are, these were all based on webcams um, that we were using. So we've got a webcam on each one of the, um, the TV stands giving us profile views. And then we had one um, up by the Yeti mic and then one pulled back further from where this view is at that's right next to the computer. Um, so the computer that's making this picture um, did the two main switch to the two main camera angles. And then the other on-site technician um, dealt with the other two camera angles monitoring them. Um, Michael, when you, when you say they are webcams, what kind of cameras yeah. were they and how are they connected? They are um, little uh, USB external webcams um, just on a tether, uh, sit, the ones that are sitting on top of your, um, your uh, monitors, and that's what they all were. These are our system coming in. This is the equipment that we had available. Um, we're working on building in our, our uh, you know, capital investment with cameras and stuff, but we've got the backlog to deal with. So um, we've been, everybody's been using um, just these external uh, webcams so that, that we brought all those in and then kind of decided which one uh, we wanted where. Um, we had one with a wide angle, one with a more narrow, uh, regular um, angle on it. Um, so we kind of picked which ones we wanted where. Um, so this is the setup without anybody in it. Okay. Um, and Ultimately, it was the sun, which was our biggest problem. Um, but I'm going to stop this and then show a picture of the, uh, the video with people actually in it. All right, so that we can see. All right, can you see that? Yep. Okay, so this is the wide angle pulled back. Um, and it wasn't, the camera wasn't up very high. Um, it was only at about uh, five feet, maybe, so right about chin level. Um, so that really needed to go up higher, but I was limited by the, um, the tripod at the time. So um, that angle is a little bit lower than I would have wanted, but um, it, it, it worked ultimately in the end. Um, so let's see if I can find one a little bit closer. Yeah. So this is a closer one, um, up tighter on the speaker, and then the uh, the plat the um, table in the middle is where we have the communion bowl, and it's sort of communion in reverse, where people come in and, and leave their water. So that's the where people were coming in front of, um, and then in here you can see the mics for the uh, choir um, lined up there. Yeah, we'll how many microphones did you use? Uh, let's see, one two three, one two three, four on the choir, and then one on the speaker, and then one on um, the keyboard. So six. So you had your choir split up into, were they in sections or just random groups? The microphones? No, the, well, the choir that were standing in front of each microphone. So you had four or five of them? Four yeah, of them they were four. I'm not sure how they were split exactly. Um, mm -hmm. We brought them, and they all came, we treated them all as one feed is, is what I can tell you about that. Um, we didn't switch between those ones. Um, I do remember when I was uh, watching this video that the, the sound of the choir was, was very good. It was nice and full and present. Um, and I remember thinking that, well, that's because you were using a number of microphones with smaller groups of people singing around them that were fairly close and then you can mix them well together. Yeah, it, 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 we, it, that's part of where we had a problem. Um, this is the side view from the um, monitor on the right-hand side. Um, and so when our choir stood up, our, our camera angle got blocked. 
Mm -hmm. And we had them marked, but apparently the putting the yellow X on the ground means don't stand there. So nobody was standing on their mark. So that it, it, this angle we had to all be ultimately didn't use it again because um, it was in the way. But when we set everything up, we um, mixed to just the, the speakers. We didn't do the keyboard. So when we were, we were all fine as far as that was going, but when we got going um, with the piano just came in way hot. And so I hadn't anticipated for that. So I'm in the back and I jumped on my Zoom settings and brought that down to about 75% on my Zoom microphone, which was the Yeti, um, to balance that out a little bit, kind of on the fly real quick going, uh-oh, because um, everybody was screaming at me that it was the first part was just way too loud. Um, so once I got that figured out, I was like, okay, we're fine. And I brought it down for the piano and then back up for the speakers. And then when we had the choir and the piano, it was somewhere in between 75% and 100%. So, ah, so that's something I didn't, I didn't quite, I didn't quite catch on to. Sure. So all these microphones that you have set out, they were just mm -hmm. for the loudspeakers? Yes. And you didn't send that to the Zoom computer? No. No. Okay. Just picked everything up through the Yeti. Okay. Yep. Yep. That was the arrangement we wanted just because of this is, that's the kind of way things flesh out for us. So. so what are we hearing when we're listening to this recording? Just the Yeti? Just the Yeti. Really? Okay. Yep. Yep. That's it. Um, and then let's see. So, um, and then again, our biggest thing was sun. We really had a problem with that. I don't even mm -hmm. sure if you're Troy. Um, he was completely completely washed out um, because of the sun. The keyboard player, right, yeah. right there. Yeah, there. Um, mm -hmm. he, and I even mentioned this in my, my walkthrough. I was like, oh, he's going to have sun in his eyes. And he did. And it was cloudy when we, when we set up and we took a chance and didn't, didn't put up our awnings, didn't put up our umbrella, didn't put anything up. Um, so... We, again, we went to this angle, but then it was so bright, we just decided not to go with this again. Um, so we had those great supplemental side profile angles, but it, it just wasn't looking right. Um, so that was something we just kind of called on the fly that we're not going to use those ones um, and just tried to stick with the two center, center angles. Um, so yeah, it went really, really great. Um, we made some uh, quick adjustments on the fly. That's always fun. Um, but I've got a fantastic team that I'm working with. And um, so we can, we, we know how to work together and deal with these, this stuff as it comes up. Um, so I was able to do what I needed to do because they could take care of the chat. They could take care of all that stuff. Um, and I didn't have to do that piece. But um, yeah, that audio is not, not having that audio balanced the way I would have wanted um, beforehand, that is something I really wanted to have a handle on the next time we go and run outside like that. Um, so that's something I'm looking at. But um, yeah, it was great. It was a great service. Fabulous. Fabulous. So, so glad. So what we're actually hearing now that I'm thinking about it is we're hearing any direct sound that's coming to the to the Yeti mic from people who are talking and singing, but we're also and primarily, I would think, hearing the sound coming from the loudspeakers. Correct. Right. Yep. And then the way we positioned the Yeti was out in the center so that it came, the sound had that, whatever you call it, vortex or wherever mm -hmm. it was going so that it hit it right. And it sounds, it sounded good. It sounded really good. Wonderful. Wonderful. So uh, I'm going to pause here a little bit because um, this is a good opportunity to, to do a little demonstration uh, and talk a little bit about... Um, about video, which we haven't really talked about a lot because well, we didn't have much to to show. But um, someone on the Discord earlier in the week posted a video from a service and asked the question, why does this video not look great? Right? Is, it, is there video compression going on? Is there something going on in, in, the, in YouTube? Um, what's going on here? And then and I took a look at it and commented on it. And then I looked at Michael's video and I didn't know what kind of cameras are being used. 
So these web cameras have tiny little sensors in them and not a lot of capability for adjustments. So we will consider that as, as I talk through this. Um, but when we go to look at um, his picture, and I'll, I'll bring that up in a moment and scan through and look at different frames, um, I want you to notice the exposure, right? So, um, so here's a here's a, a picture of here's a frame of picture, and on the other side are kind of meters that we use to evaluate video called scopes. Um, there's a waveform mon two waveform monitors at the bottom that are showing different things, and then a vector scope with the circle at the top. And just like we use audio mon audio meters and different audio meters to to let us see what is happening electrically and acoustically in in sound, we use these devices to evaluate pictures, right? Because it's all very it can be very um, subjective if all you're looking at is a monitor. Now, in Michael's case, he was working in bright sun and, you know, looking at a 10-inch or 15-inch monitor or even the big 46-inch monitor, with that much ambient light, it's going to, you're not going to be able to really be able to see how bright something is, how dark something is, what's the, what's the dynamic range between white and dark. And so we use these scopes to to get a better idea of what's going on and so i wanted to call your attention to the two waveform monitors at the bottom so um the one you see on the left that you see uh, right here is there's some green there's some red there's some blue and there's this line over here this is um this is color right this is what we call chroma and it goes from zero at the bottom to 100% at the top. On the right side, this is luminance. So this is white and black. And again, goes from zero at the bottom to 100% at top. And uh, we look at these to see if the white point, which is the brightest part of the scene, is being clipped, just like it does in audio. And where you see here all this white, this white line with different um, uh, density at the top, this is all this is all clipped information. And when you look at the picture, and you look at all the white spaces on people's shadows and people's heads, um, and you you can't see any detail there. You know, it's all fuzzy. It's it's com looks compressed, and that's because it is. It's because it's being clipped off. Um, we go to that shot of the keyboard player. Let me look for that. There he is. Bring that up. All right. Now you see on the left, you see that blue line. It's all, it's clipped all the way at the top. And that's his shirt and the microphone. And as you look left to right, it's roughly the same as in the video frame. And so you see, um, Right about here would be his face. Um, and let's see, the post at the, the post on the left side is right here, if you can see my cursor. Um, and let's look at something else. All right, so this has got a lot of white information here on the right to the right side of the screen, and you can see that solid white line at the top of the luminance. And if you look at the left, you see there's green and red is really uh, up there as well. So let, let me um, let me let's look at something else to give you an idea of what it could look like. All right, so here's some video from another show. I think we know this guy, don't we? Um, so this is Leo on Office Hours. And if you look at this waveform, it looks a lot different, right? You'll see that on the luminance, the white um, waveform monitor, uh, the, the whitest part of the picture is at 80%, right about here. 
and in the color um, you see it's well distributed and there's there are no lines at the top being clipped and this is this is a well exposed picture now anybody who is a still photographer knows about exposure um, here's another picture this is alex Lindsay who runs the show and um, uh, you can see this is this is his face right here in the center and his shoulders to the left and right and if you look at the color you can see where his face is a little bit on the red side and then you can see where his shirt is and then you can see the different colors of his uh, of his shoulders and jacket um, and then there's the background as well so that's the blue that you see over here in the center um, the the vector scope at the top is also very interesting um, what this is showing you um, um, you see there's red uh, magenta as we go clockwise around the circle from the top red magenta blue cyan green and yellow and the dots here this dot here is a 75 percent exposure the outer dot is a hundred percent exposure and you get that for each of the colors and then there's a straight line here that ends right about there that is the flesh tone line and um, everybody regardless of skin tone has the same melatonin mm -mm -mm. same same skin pigments and so this is a reference line for exposure of skin tone and so if we look at this you see all this red uh, red over here that's on the red side of the line so Alex is actually looking a little red here um, if we brought down the red if he brought down the red on his camera it would line up with this line and he'd be perfect uh, if we look at something else and I'm gonna I'm gonna just look at a couple more things here and then we'll end this so we'll just look at some other people here um, so um, the luminance here is is pretty well exposed nothing is clipped um, the red in the center that's his face so he's a little hot there and but overall is is not so bad here's um here's another person right so we see what a well exposed picture looks like and um that's something that we want to uh, strive for when we're setting up our cameras um, all of the cameras have um, should have some form of adjustments for color and and brightness and contrast and hue and um, uh, not density but uh, saturation uh, and when we're working with multiple cameras we want to try and get them um, so that they look very close to each other so that when you switch from one camera to another it doesn't look like a completely different show right okay so enough of that um let's move on to just Leo. very quickly marty yes. um you talked about the um um you talked about those meters there that you were showing um where do people get those meters i mean we know that the the meter that we have for audio here we've talked about that before that's a that's a free there's a free version of that. Is there a free version of what you've just shown? I haven't found or a free a, version. Um, or how expensive is that version? <laughs> right. So this version is actually very inexpensive. I bought it for about 20 bucks. And okay. um, I will have to find the link and post put, put it. Put the link in, in Discord. That would be great. I will put the link in the Discord. Um, there are other um, packages of scopes that are much more expensive. Um, but yeah. this is a pretty basic and uh, it works pretty well for a reasonable price. Um, I have questions about here. The horizontal axis on the video plots, are they time? No, they're not. They're actually um, from the left side of the frame to the right side of the frame. Uh, that was from Keith Miller and Paint Branch. And Graham is asking, uh, I think it's the frame you're looking at in those bottom scopes. Yes, it's, it's the frame. We're looking at the video frame. All right. Anybody else? Any questions about that? And if not, we can move on to Leo. So Leo, you've been working with a number of uh, synagogues in the UK and elsewhere. 
um, for High Holy Days, which uh, are just about ending. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, they've ended here in the UK and actually they've ended in the US as well, actually now. Um, so that's our la that's our uh, big celebration. Well, it's not a celebration, but it's a big event every year. And today is a day of remembrance and uh, the day when all my sins have been uh, that I, to, I should be sin free today. Uh, so now I will try and uh, put more back into that uh into that in the next 10 minutes okay so what i'm going to show you is i'm going to concentrate and focus on one synagogue which is my own synagogue uh which is the ark and uh the big thing i'm gonna say um the, the where i'm this journey is where i am on it at the moment is around about four years that we've been doing some of this stuff um but very very similar to other stuff that russ has said you know it's not, none of this is there there have been big jumps at times but it's been a journey rather than it's been a, like we started and this is exactly where we are uh from day one and um my own learning has happened during this time as well so if you asked me three years ago what i knew of that picture that marty just put up either on video or on audio i'll be like yeah they i can under, sort of give me two minutes i'll sort of try and understand it mix minus yeah, it sounds like you've uh i'm back at school doing maths and i'd hated that anyway so uh it's that's where i am okay so i'm just going to show you a couple of quick things and try and give you some feel for where we are um and uh, as I said, this is uh, we, this has been a journey, and and I thought what I'd do really quickly is show you where we are on on i so on YouTube, you obviously have your uploads and you have your live, so our uploads are things that you add in yourself, but on your live, this is how this is in your live, and you'll see that we are around about. Uh, sorry, um, why is that showing live? It's only showing 490. Uh, we're well over 490. I don't know why it's just jumped to 490. Um, if I go back to here and do live, it'll probably go better. Yeah, there you go. 1,114 live uh, services over that time. I'm right in the middle here. Uh, March, March, this is when the world ended in the UK. So if I go back one more page, hopefully it'll go back a page. I've not tried it, but there you go. Okay, so we're now at March, March 2020. And this is what our services looked like just before lockdown. So I haven't opened this one in particular, but you'll see it's a fixed uh, angle camera um, and the person will appear. Um, I will see if I can give you some audio um hopefully uh if i can get some Violence thumbs up if you can hear any audio the ball because the opposition everyone okay. picks up the ball so and you can see it's pretty fixed each, fixed um, uh, angle game. nothing nothing it's exciting uh show. people will come on and off come um on, and to explain yeah, this is a friday uh, night which means we use the lower lower area uh but you can't really see that and classic thing happens here is actually uh it's all finished and they're just talking away <laughs> but because the camera was on like a, it's a security camera that just runs for a set period of time although i don't know what they're doing there that maybe is looking a bit strange um anyway it's a strange one there so that that was how we used to that was how we did um it in there we went went into lockdown and i did a very quick video uh, of what happened um in the day of locked uh the, the first this is like hello uh four days of after the mpls um obviously there is no synagogue services today uh directly but you'll be able to watch online and we thought we'd actually long, show this. you what we've done to so you can see how we've set it up Yes. So this is Leo. Didn't know this about masks. John. We've been remember. in here all today. Didn't know so about masks. So didn't know about social around. distancing. Didn't know about all of those inside. things that you did. You know, oh, oh, an innocent world. No, 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 no. Tons of things to squirt on your hand every time you. So moved, um, as you can see, the synagogue is very empty. <laughs> we never take them uh, for granted. Working today um, to get it ready. But so you'll see, you we're going into the synagogue tonight. itself. And what have we done? Um, instead of having all the streaming sitting outside, we've actually set... 
and you can see that we literally took the whole of the enter center of the hallway at uh, the center of the room and we put cameras up on there up um, so that you can actually watch um, we will be that the the uh, tripod to the right you see a cable that's called the internet so to get the internet into the room i had to run a an ethernet cable because of course why would why would a synagogue have internet why would a church have internet <laughs> yeah, these the strange, strange requirements the, uh, the service um so we ran it like that for and and if i go back into there you'll see that the services start in there and it's actually quite amazing when i look at this um how quickly we change to that from that single view to that's the view of what you've just that's the cameras coming from the view that you've just seen that they're running uh they start with just one camera like that out as they might wish um it's and in, uh, marty was talking about color to have Rabbi we're, we're going to there at the moment and, but uh, you can see um um, and then we move back in time or move forward in time. Um, and, uh, actually, I, uh, let me see what this one's like. This is a, this is not, this is a kid's service. Um, yeah, there we go. lovely to see you. And you'll and see I that we now have doesn't... put, we've now, the, the on the oh, you Hello. see, she's got oh, a load fantastic. of buttons at her finger they are the only two people in the room about what our favorite animals are they are the only two people in the room um, <laughs> and uh they are they're controlling everything can from you, there what did you see? um can, but it's still not, very can static can we do that we can if we move it forward even by a week or two you'll see that Let's have a look. Hopefully one of these will play. Um, we'll see that now. They had a holding screen. And so that they and I'm just hopeful. I, I don't know. Yeah. So they've now, they've now got different people in the room. They only ever had four at the most see that the angle of the camera just changed so we've now got a different angle yeah if you can lower the volume on your youtube player that yeah that's great. okay great thank you thank you i couldn't tell i can just do that um okay sorry it's hard to know okay tell me tell me if it's better now there's is no that a bit better? Oh yeah, dogs. much. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, on the left-hand side of that, on her, under her right hand on that rabbi is the A10 Mini that Russ talked about. Exactly the same thing. She is literally, and she is pressing four buttons. And this is a great shot. So she's able to bring up a camera um uh as he talks he you can it's see he's Torah reading from what's known as torah and you can actually see he's actually Hanayten. reading that et haka, et haka, um how do i get I that know. camera there let's see if no. i can show you a Kach picture shed, where you can see it and so moses took the star okay if you look very carefully at the logo in the top right hand corner you'll see that there is a bar behind it and actually the but the, the logo is sitting in front of the camera hiding the camera so i put the logo on the screen Clever boy <laughs> yeah but you can just about make out the 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 bar it's on a lighting stand uh and it's looking over so if you if you took that away you'd all you all you'd see is this whacking great big camera so we we you know you have to again you have to be creative there's only the 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 they will run they were running friday and saturday friday night service just the two of them and the only additional people on a saturday were two members of the choir who were standing there but they were no no other operators in the room that's it four people because we were only allowed four people in the room so there's lots of iterations of this but i'm going to just jump over to 
uh, where we are now. And I'm going to jump to what was the service that was literally just happened um, this morning. And you'll see a big difference, right? So this is this morning's service. Okay. So first of all, when we go to the main shot of the two of them, let's get one with it, just the two of them. All right. So we start off, we can have actually wide shots of just the individual. There's been some other changes. We've changed the pulpits. Uh, they got changed about a week ago. We normally start now with, at the beginning of the service, we'll have music playing before, pe before it starts. Um, and then the two of them, um, uh, they're, they're, they're on, this, on the bimmer, and you can see that it's, the colors are much nicer. Um, and then we got a lot more shots. So this is the choir. The choir is over to the right hand side, but you've got two shots of the choir, but you also have a shot of the choir. So this is actually three cameras. So you've got the two rabbis at the top. Um, and then you've got the, uh, two part two to the choir. So we've been able to do all of these things. Um, as I said, we we've gone from one stage to another to another at the beginning we were using obs we are now using vmix so what does that actually look like well the good thing is i can actually take you there live even though it's the middle of the night so this is it this is um this is uh this is us live uh there um and i'm going to just control the cameras so that all the cameras are the PTZ optics cameras and you will now see that the PTZ optics camera you can just about make it hopefully you can make it out sitting there there okay so that's the camera there um that's so that's the camera what, that was that was showing us the Torah that's the camera that shows you the Torah so if I go into my look into my cameras and I flip to uh, camera one uh, no, sorry, if I go to camera three and I cut across, and bring that up. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't normally do this. And I go to camera, I think it's camera three on there. Uh, maybe camera, maybe called camera four, actually. Yeah, it's camera four. And I look back, obviously, it's dark because it's, 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 there's no lighting in the main room. And actually, those are those other two cam, those are the cameras. So, so the two cameras are now looking at each other, if that makes sense. Um, and you can see there's two cameras there. So we were able to put in two cam the, the cameras. There's a, there's a screen there for the rabbis to look at. And everything is controlled in that little booth that we cut into the building. We actually cut a hole in the wall to able, enable it to do that. Um, so going back to camera one, and switching that over and bringing that back again. Now, you said there are two cameras, but you showed a three shot with... Um... Yeah, if you look to the one on the left, there's actually two cameras there. On the, ah. on the Can you see there's two cameras, one above another, and then on the right, there's the other camera. So the, the one that we normally use for the Torah cam, which is, uh, oh, sorry is the one that you can see on the right hand side there uh, also enables us to do multiple angles so the other thing that we did is as you can see i've only got the stage lights on so the rest of the room is dark at the moment i can't turn on the rest of the lights from here uh, as we put two big screens up either side so that the audience or in the room can see it so when we now look at um, some of our camera angles um we've got camera two one two three all so that's that camera there if i cut that across you'll actually see there's three cameras in in play so what that looked like in um back in here in the live that we were looking at you can see that was that three cameras are there in the live so that's it and going back to how um that we control all this because it all looks confusing it's not it's all controlled um by uh, a stream deck and this is using companion 
So for those of you using the Stream Deck and are using it directly, the eventually you end up wanting to control it by this, which is companion, because you're able to sit there and make decisions. Uh, and, and, and all you do is you choose the button. So you can say that says that's the rabbi, the, the, the one who's normally on the right with liturgy, the one on the left with liturgy, just the liturgy on its own or a view of what we call the, the near to mid. Um, hopefully you can see my mouse moving. Yes, you can. Um, and then you've got various other things, but you also can play videos from this as well. And then all important button is that one tells us if there's audio coming from the room out to the stream and whether we're streaming out. So, you know, if the mics are hot out to the, out to there, and we run things like a ticker across the button to tell you where to join the end of the service on zoom. Um, the last thing I just wanted to really cover and then I'm done. Um, going back to this, uh, all of the, all of the equip, all, everything you saw there, the, the cameras we've talked about before, they're the PTZ optics ones. The computer that we use is uh, a Dell precision 5820. And I've talked, I think I've talked about this before. This is the one we buy. I've put, I put, I've bought nine of these now at different synagogues. I've bought exactly the same computer. I never bought a single one brand new. I buy them secondhand. And uh, just to give you an example, this is one on eBay at the moment. Um, and you can see that this one is for sale on eBay with 16 gig of RAM, the Nvidia Quattro card, which is what you need. Um, and um, this will be a, 2125, which I think is eight cores off the top of my head. Um, I can't quite remember with it because there's different models all the time, but they have been an absolute brilliant find because they are super silent. You can see that's an exploded view. Obviously, if it was running like that, when you're using it, it'd be difficult. Uh, but they, uh, run really quiet and they have the power to do the streaming and the zooming at the same time. There's only one computer in use at that, that synagogue. Uh, it does all of it on that one PC. So that gives you a quick overview. Hopefully that was of interest. That was fabulous. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, um, a lot of ways to do, to do things. And when you put some thought into it and maybe a little bit of money into it and you think it's through. You yeah, can do no multiple camera we angles. Well, yeah. How much did you spend? How much was that? Okay. So we did quite a lot. We had to replace quite a lot of things. So, um, including the cameras, we did, we, uh, cameras and that work to build that room. Um, we spent around about 40,000. So it sounds a lot, but, um, when you add it all up and you put in a brand new mixer, we needed to replace the mixer. Um, the cameras are, the cameras are $2,000 a piece roughly. Um, so we needed three of those. Um, we did, I'm just trying, we bought there's six big screens in there. So they're in there as well. And the cabling, cabling is quite expensive. There was no cabling at all. As I said, we could, with the internet was run over <laughs> as a cable that was running across the room. So we, we put in, um, uh, cat six cabling from that little hot cut cubby hole at the back into the front. Uh, we run SDI as well. Um, but our feeling was, um, and this is the way to look at it. We've grown, we've had 50 new members that are outside of our, outside of our area. And we, the way synagogues work, they work on memberships. Um, and give or take a family membership is around about a thousand dollars a year, somewhere in that figure. So over the period of time, it's going to pay for itself. Right. Wow. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I, I say this often presentation quality matters. Um, you've got really good looking pictures. You've got the means to control them. I think it's really interesting how you've given the rabbis the ability to switch cameras. Well, we had to take it off them. Well, we've oh, tried. Right. Oh, that was an earlier version, right? But even that worked we've pretty tried. well, right? We've tried. <laughs> um, 
whatever yeah, we I do. I imagine that they're kind of busy and, and, and can't really pay yeah, attention. But I'm sitting there in the service today and we flip the camera to the other rabbi and she she's got it on her pulpit she literally they went into bit focus and redid one of the buttons mid-service yeah it's like <laughs> but it's just it, it it it's challenging but you know i, I think i think what's like savvy, then. it is but i think what's really important and i'm going to reiterate what was said earlier by you know by others is um it's through through things like this that I've learned how to do it. It's through things like this that uh, the rabbi who I was talking about, Rabbi Lear, she's attended a lot of these as well. And that's where all the knowledge has come from. It's not been that we've brought in, you know, I, I knew nothing about all of this. I, I knew a bit about it. And I, you know, so the A10 Mini they used was mine because I did some a little bit of this, but I didn't know. I, well, I could argue I still don't know how to color balance or do any of those things. But, you know, we just learning on the go. Um, and although it was a four, I say it's four years, like everybody else in this, it's really two, it's coming up on, it will be two years in January, February. Um, it's been, uh, it's been an interesting ride. Indeed it has. Indeed. All right. Well, thank you, Leo. Um, there was a quick question in here, which sort of got self answered, but I'll, um, yeah. uh, from James, <laughs> as you saw, we had to make some short term, you know, throw cameras into the middle of the room. It looked like a, it looked like a sound stu a TV studio for a while. <laughs> Um, and even when we got the PTZ cameras, they were actually initially all on tripods and there was cables everywhere. Um, and you, you would only do so much each week and pull it apart and just had to leave it. And it isn't, it only looks as good as it looks. I would say in the last four weeks when we finished moving all the cabling under the floor and tidied everything up and because we we've only had people as in congregants back in the room in about the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. That's been a very limited number. There were 60 there tonight and that's probably the biggest we've had, mm -hmm. uh, because of restrictions and everybody's seats are very spaced out. And we've got, uh, one of the things we've got, and I, th I would recommend people get it is we've got a carbon dioxide meter. So I don't know if you've seen these things. So you've got the, 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 the wireless things that you put the sensors in and it just gives you a carbon dioxide reading for the room. Um, and there are set levels. So you can just see that if you've got the windows open and everything's right, fine, that you're running um, the room. And I think it's, um, it's, it's, worth, it's worth looking at that it, just for your own sort of like, look, we're doing the right things and we know we're at the right levels. It's worth having a look at that. So James uh, has a follow up questions. He wants to know if you're happy with the PTZ camera positions and has height been an issue or height has been an issue for some people? Um, it's a good question, James. I think, you know, you've at the end of the day, even though we're, we're aiming, we're aiming for the best view for people watching. The reality is with everything, um, the, the reality with everything is that the camera, the room has to work. We can't hide people behind cameras or put cameras right in the middle of the room. It's not like a, in my whole old world of sport where, you know, they throw cameras down and if the crowd's in the way, well, the crowd gets moved. Um, you know, you can't do that. So. So I've seen this actually with quite a lot of places that they've ended up with quite a sh sharp uh, camera angle. So you've, you know, the way to resolve sharp camera angles is you move the camera back, but then you've got to have a longer lens. So right. the ones we've got are the 30 times zoom. Um, at the moment, they seem to be a compromise. I'd say they're a little bit, the only thing I'd say with the PTZs you start getting used to it. You start realizing they're a little bit noisy. They're not as clean as some others. And at $2,000, you then work out, um, 
other things, but um, uh, and that's it. And um, and Keith Miller's question on the carbon dioxide measure to give an approximation of how many people are breathing in the same air. Yes, there is. There are figures out there that tell you how, you know, what. So I think off the top of my head, I'm I, I'm not going to say the figure and say this is exact. There's a figure like a thousand. Um, which means that's roughly what your root, your bedroom is like at night time with it. If you haven't got any windows open, um, we are effectively always half of that level. So whatever that means, I, I can't remember. So we're at 500. I can't remember, but mm -hmm. it's like, we're never near the level, which says you're rebreathing your own air. So, cause we just open all the windows and open the doors, et cetera, and have the fans on, but it is worth I can't, I, I don't know the numbers. All right. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Leo. I want to move on to Jay Paul, who is with the uh, UU congregation in Columbia, Maryland. They are very lucky to have him because he is, um, he is one of the pros of the pros. And uh, if he can't get it right, well, <laughs> then there's a bigger problem. But uh, hi, Jay. Um, hey, Marty. Hi, yeah, everybody. So so tell us what you've been going Yeah, Yeah, no, uh, thanks for the kind words. I don't always get it right. And uh, when you don't get it right, that's a learning experience. And um, and that's really the way you have to look at it. There's, uh, there's uh, uh, very few guarantees uh, in applying technology uh, to worship or really anything else. Um, but what uh, what I've been up to is we had our our first regular hybrid service um, this past weekend, and we had some predecessor services that I guess we could call test runs um, with very, uh, very limited um, uh, attendance. We, we're, we're, so Columbia, Maryland, uh, Maryland as a state uh, has, uh, has, has done, I think, pretty darn well in terms of uh, vaccination rate. Um, and uh, I think my county, uh, Columbia, is in Howard County, Maryland. I, I think we've we've got uh, a pretty good uh, number of folks uh, that are are fully vaccinated for COVID. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but in spite of um, uh, you know the the fact that Maryland has been a, a pretty sane state in regard to um, uh, our approach to COVID we're still being really cautious. So um, I'll, I'll start by saying that my congregation occupies an interfaith center of which we are the majority owner. And, and we built our space, uh, I want to say, in the 1980s with a, uh, a partner congregation, uh, United Methodist. And so so we're a tenant of the space the methodist congregation is a tenant of the space we've got a lot more invested uh financially in the space we're, we're the majority owner but the way it's it's governed is the owen brown interfaith spent uh the interfaith centers where we're housed both of our congregations have nominated people to the board that runs uh this this, this space where where we have our respective uh sanctuaries um, in addition to each of the member congregations, uh, ourselves and, and the Methodists, um, we run our space out uh, to other congregations. So it, it's a facility that um, it's really important to rent it because that rental uh, income helps pay for a staff to maintain it and run it. Um, and it, it's been very difficult uh, for us, uh, you know, by, and not certainly not just us. Um, it's been difficult for everybody who has uh, had a, a had to maintain staff to operate a space when you don't have income. Um, so, uh, you know, I will mention we did take advantage of um, uh, the partner uh, uh, the loans that were made available by the federal government as part of COVID relief. Things like that have been helpful. Um, I don't think, uh, if I recall correctly, I don't know that we laid anybody off uh, staff, but these things, you know, it, it's difficult. And, um, you know, for congregations to go through it, obviously we're not unique. This happens everywhere. Um, but I, I, it's, it's, I think a little bit, 
you know, hard to go out and, um, you know, encourage people to come in and rent your space again if you're not using it yourself. And the other thing I want to point out, we, like everybody, I think, have had a hunger to get back together. We miss the people that that have joined us uh, for our services uh, for, you know, for as long as our, our congregation's been together. We still have some founding members of the congregation. Um, so our, our intent in coming back was, it was always to do it safely. Uh, and it was always to continue to be able to bring, uh, our services, uh, to those who aren't comfortable coming back in, uh, for whatever reason, they may be uncomfortable. Um, uh, it, it's, you know, I think many of us uh, were very optimistic maybe in May and June that you know we we that the the pandemic was coming to the end we had vaccines and and you know it, we 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 heard guidance of well you can you know if you're vaccinated you you don't need to wear your mask and then you know while we're just starting to embrace this a delta variant came in and uh, just kind of knocked us all down so i i just want to throw these things out because the, the i think there's some context here for all of us who are wanting to return to our our uh, sanctuaries and do hybrid worship. I think we'll always do hybrid worship going forward because, um, you, you know, even if we even if when we get past the pandemic, uh, there are going to be reasons why people can't uh, come in or maybe, you know, don't want to make the journey in uh, to our congregations and uh, participate in person. So. I, I think, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, what we're trying to achieve, uh, we want people to feel included. Um, and to that point of feeling included, uh, you know, our, our hybrid services by uh, both intention and I think necessity, uh, they incorporate um, uh, people uh, joining us remotely, whether it's uh, a congregational uh, you know, uh, 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 a member of, a, of of the board, somebody doing announcements, somebody doing a reading. So our 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 services are very much hybrid um, in a way that we're incorporating remote participants with live participants. And I should also say that we're you know of, of the things that we do um, uh, within our sanctuary. Um, we do have a we, we do have a greeting where you know and if you're there in person pre pre uh, COVID you know turn and greet your neighbor um, and I think that's a pretty common ritual in in, in uh, congregations of all different faith groups um, when we do this virtually we've actually uh, we allow everybody to unmute themselves and for thirty seconds they can greet each other and it's obviously it's cacophony it's you'll hear people's voices discreetly uh saying hello to somebody you'll hear names they'll wave and it'll cut from person to person to person after 30 seconds we go ahead and mute everybody back and we resume the service um so those those are things that we we've done remotely well now we're in person how do you deal with that um so let me talk a little bit about what we've, we've done in our sanctuary to prepare to come back in this and, and do hybrid worship. So prior to prior to uh, shutting ourselves down for COVID, we uh, finally uh, we we added a permanent video projector. Uh, prior to having uh, the, a permanent projector, we, we'd always we, we'd had the screen. I think from the beginning that was part of our infrastructure uh when we we built this sanctuary you're looking at our sanctuary seat space uh which came online in 2015. um so we had the projector the uh, screen we finally got around to installing uh a uh, laser projector uh in order to uh, uh, uh fill that screen i think we the actual screen dimensions i believe it's a a 16 uh 16 feet by 10 foot screen and it's an electric roll down. Um, the projector is fed from the sound booth where uh, we can we we've got a a, a a video switch that allows us to source 
uh, an input plate that's uh, in the floor of the sanctuary or in the floor of the platform. Uh, and we're using a category cable. It's a, an HD base T uh, transmitter receiver to come back to the, uh, the video projector. Uh, we can feed the video projector from the booth and, you know, it, it's fairly, uh, you know, when we do our services, we're putting zoom up on screen. We're doing that from the booth. So we, we have a, uh, we have an input HDMI input for the, uh, for the computer that's either, you know, uh, doing just presentation work or presentation work and zoom as the case may be today. Um, so um, in order to prepare us to actually do hybrid worship, we needed to add a camera uh, and we we had limited uh, funds to do so. So, uh, you know, I, I think one of the things of the threads that uh, I think is common through our conversations with you uh, as uh, members of congregations that are trying to implement this, um, I don't think there are very, very many people who just uh, are fortunate enough to have uh, uh, some congregant, uh, member of the congregation who says, here's a blank check. You do whatever you want to do to uh, bring this technology into your space. That just, I mean, I, I, it may happen somewhere, but I, I don't think anybody's ever, ever mentioned, hey, we have an unlimited budget. What, what shall we do? And bang, you have, uh, you know, three... Uh, uh, you know, $50,000 cameras with $50,000 lenses on really expensive pedestals uh, uh, located around the sanctuary. That doesn't happen. We're all working on, on budgets. And, uh, you know, we were, as, as we've talked here, uh, I think in, in quite excruciating detail sometimes, it's really important to decide, you know, what your priorities are, where the money is going to be spent, how, and uh, with, with the knowledge that, that you have multiple objectives uh, that have to simultaneously happen for you to do hybrid. So things you need to do, we need to get audio into the into the uh, into our um, UC engine, whether that's Zoom or, or uh, Google or, or YouTube or whatever. We need to get audio in. We need to get video in via camera and we need to get video out and uh, make that available uh, within the sanctuary. Uh, at the very least, uh, you know, to the congregants who can see uh, what's happening on screen. So uh, in our case, we installed a, a single pan tilt zoom video camera. If you look in the uh, lower left hand side of the screen right now, uh, I've got a picture and I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor at all. The, the picture does rotate, but right where the exit sign is above the door is uh, right next to that exit sign is a is our PTZ camera. Um, and that is a camera with a, a, a 20x optical zoom. Uh, it is a, I want to say it's better than an HD resolution. Uh, we're using it as an HD resolution. Uh, and it, there is a, uh, there's a category cable for control. And then the camera output is uh, SDI. So that camera then connects to a uh, Blackmagic web presenter interface in the sound booth. And as implemented by the uh, systems integrator that we've used to do our work, um, and, and I'll, I'll sidestep for a second and say, when we run our services uh, on Sundays, we have a digital mixing console in the sound booth. So we manually operate a mixing console uh, live microphones, choir microphones, uh, wireless microphones, etc. Uh, during the week when other events happen in our room, there's a an audio digital signal processor uh, that also has the task of being a microphone mixer, and that is controlled by a Crestron touch panel in the booth. So our digital signal processor uh, it is, is, it has multiple functions. It acts as the speaker processor. It routes audio to uh, the loudspeaker system. It has the equalizers uh, and speaker protection. Uh, that's all programmed into it. Um, it does its own mixing when, you, when you're okay with just an automatic mixing mode. Uh, and the output of that uh, DSP uh, is actually programmed to go directly into this web presenter. 
so that a, uh, a, a user of the sanctuary who is not us could bring their laptop in and stream out. So it's designed for a one way audio out, video out to the far end uh, with really minimal intervention uh, from, uh, from anybody in order to do a very simple setup. We have presets on the Crestron panel that you can recall to aim the camera. Uh, and these presets are set up by us to do things like a uh, essentially a, um, a, 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 a lectern shot that's uh, really capturing uh, our minister um, uh, from you know sort of a waist up shot. Uh, we have a wide shot to grab the whole platform. We've got a, a, a we zoom in for the music minister at the piano. And then we also have uh, in front of, I don't know that we have it set up here uh, showing in this picture, but we also have a table uh, where we have uh, where our, uh, that's out in front of the steps. And when we turn stones for joys and sorrows, uh, congregation members can walk up and drop a stone uh, when we do uh, when we do music later. So normally, uh, right now, our routine is that our 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 music minister Michael Adcock will step down and and Michael will drop stones as uh, as the minister uh, reads off joys and sorrows. So that's another zoom uh, shot for the camera. So. We have these four shots that are, are uh, I think, predominantly those are those are how the camera is used. And as the camera moves presets, we are going to we're going to pan and we're going to zoom and we're going to focus. And I think uh, I, I know Marty's discussed it before uh, that when you have a single camera and it has to move a lot, if you're if you're watching the screen, and watching the camera make these moves, it can be a bit disconcerting, uh, which is a a a, a very uh, you know that's why we want to have uh, we we if we can uh, we we recommend that you uh, have more than one camera so that you can have shots set up where you can transition from a sh one shot to another uh, with a wipe a fade or, or or an effect where it won't be a drastic. Oh wow, I'm getting motion sick watching this camera move around. So things that we learn uh, as we as we you know do our first services, you know that that's one of them. So from our initial couple of services to the last service, I think uh, one of our one of our tech team members brought a uh, uh, a a GoPro Hero Nine in that we could set up for a wide shot. And have another input, but I I, need, I digress for a second. So, um, running our service uh, from the sound booth, we have uh, a computer set up, and let me I, I I don't have an interior of the booth shot. Um, I have an exterior shot. So we are looking at as I've got uh, one of our members is uh, running the mixing console. Um, we also have a computer running OBS in Zoom, and the computer running OBS in Zoom uh, is handling our media playback. So uh, within OBS, uh, if we have pre-recorded video, it might be choir video because our choir hasn't performed live uh, yet. That's coming. Uh, they're actually rehearsing tonight with masks on in the sanctuary. Um, if we have any pre any any pre-recorded content uh, or audio content. Uh, we have we have static slide uh, prior to the service with uh, music. We've got uh, I want to say about 15 minutes of music, um, and then we go into the service. At the end of the service, we then have a rotating slideshow again with uh, with with uh, multiple music tracks. So all this content uh, you know currently is coming from this computer running OBS. Uh, generally, most of the time, we, we may have uh, services. Uh, I think this weekend, we're not using OBS. We're using PowerPoint and a music player. Um, so one of the things that, that we uh, ran into uh, during the service is the method of connection uh, of the OBS computer to the mixing console. So the way we, uh, we, we originally did these services is we have a USB connection. And I'm going to jump to another picture. Uh, and that USB connection 
two USB connections, actually. I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, this is just showing, this is now showing the current audio uh, connection, what we're doing uh, uh, in terms of uh, the audio connectivity between our mixing console, our... Can you make that picture full screen? Uh, yeah, let me see what I can do. And zoom... Not sure if this will. Let's see, fit height? No. Yep, I'm zooming out a little bit. Thanks, Acrobat Reader. You're not good. Yeah. Ah! That's a good zoom level if you could pan around from there. Did you actually see it? No, not at the moment, but where you were. Yeah, okay, hang on. All right. There we go. Okay, how's that? Is that better? Uh, a little bigger. Do you like it a little bigger? Okay. Yep. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, there you go. All right, better. That'll work. Okay. So, um, uh, so at any rate, the the way we'd originally connected this is the USB audio connection between the uh, Zoom computer conveys bidirectional audio. We're we're taking our Zoom audio from the far end. Any remote participants or presenters come into the computer, and then we uh, we feed that audio. Uh, over to uh, the mixing console. Um, our audio interface uh, is a uh, digital signal processor called uh, a Tessera Forte. It's made by Biamp. It's the company I work for. And this device uh, is actually uh, taking Zoom audio in and out and bringing it to the mixing console. So think of it as uh, it, it, it does the same function you might do if you have... Um, uh, an outboard um, USB interface like a, a Focusrite uh, or a Presonus or any any other typical USB to um, uh, uh, computer interface. In this case, this device has, has got some functionality that you won't find in uh, in uh, a normal um, a USB audio interface because it's full full DSP. And it includes an, uh, an, a very powerful acoustic echo canceller, noise canceller, uh, equalizers, et cetera. And, but so I'll just, I'll leave it. It does a lot of things. Um, but one of the difficulties we had during, uh, during our service is we only had the single audio output from the computer over USB to the mixing console. So what that meant was your your level control input your audio level from zoom uh, is coming over the usb and your playback audio was also coming over that same usb into the mixing console so think of it this way i've got two sources in the mixer i only have one fader so if the zoom audio is really high i bring it down uh and if we you know and and if we're playing back audio it's low or high you're always having to move this fader um, because we really didn't have uh, a good uh, level management between um, uh, the zoom output and the uh, program audio output. So a change we made this, this past week is we, we ended up taking a second output out of the AV presenter's computer. So if, if you look uh, where my, where, where my uh, uh, if you can see the hand on screen, AV Presenter PC has got a USB 2 cable that goes to the Tessera Forte device. That cable carries the Zoom audio to the PA system. That's what you, how you hear people remotely. It's also taking the microphone mix, and these would be the minister's microphone, wireless microphones, anything that happens in the room, the piano, Etc. Those are routed over to that same PC, so they become sourced to the far end of the call. Um, so, in order to uh, 
be able to have two faders, a, a, a fader that controls Zoom audio from the outside and program audio from the very same computer, we ended up taking the headphone output out of this computer and using that headphone output to go to a uh, microphone uh, input strip in the mixing console. So that, uh, that now gives us the ability to have a separate fader for audio uh, program playback audio from the computer and zoom audio from the computer. Um, you know, th this may or may not, uh, it depends on how you are uh, setting your system up. Uh, you maybe, maybe you have a uh, completely separate computer for your media playback from your zoom audio. Uh, you then, you know, automatically you would have two faders anyway. We're doing it all in one place. And, and that's, uh, that's why we needed to separate these out. Um, so what I did, so after making a lot of changes uh, in the wiring, uh, programming, gain structure, level setting, uh, I came home and decided to, you know, document this so that our volunteers who are not professional AV folks, um, you know, had some way to uh, understand, you know, all the signal flow, which, you know, in some cases it's a cable. You can, I can trace a cable from point A to point B. That's pretty, that, that's pretty understandable. That's not, uh, that, that's, that's not hard to figure out. But a lot of things that happen in a sound system aren't just simply, you know, happening in a single cable dedicated to a single function. Um, some things are, are a little bit more arcane, uh, hence the labeling to, uh, to explain what's happening. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll up a little bit. Uh, our mixing console, for example, um, has an input uh, using using this input. It's a connector we labeled as iPod. The intent was to connect an iPod for music. That goes in the computer. Uh, the Zoom audio return, that's coming from the Tessera Forte. And we're essentially using the Tessera Forte to interface uh, the analog world, the analog outputs and inputs of the audio console to the Tessera Forte converts it over to USB for the PC. That's as, as straightforward a way, I think, as I, I can explain that. And if we go down to, uh, I go down the next page, I think uh, one of the things I did, I think is helpful is I have a number and that number in the bubble then relates to what's actually happening in the system. So these are things that, you know, I think we've, we, we've sort of concentrated on, hey guys, these are the parts and pieces that we're using to, to connect these things together. And we talk about training, we talk about setting things up. You know what we really haven't talked about a whole lot when we've, uh, when, when we've had our, uh, these Thursday night sessions, we really haven't talked a lot about the documentation process. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna pitch you a little bit. Um, if you have one person in your congregation who's an expert on all the equipment and nobody really, uh, you know, has that level of understanding, uh, you know, whoever he or she is that conceived of this program, this maybe it was a maybe it was a contractor you hired. Um, if something happens to that person, they're not available, they're on vacation, they're sick. Um, and you don't have other people on your team who don't understand how things work, you may end up being in really big trouble in terms of executing a service. So uh, what, what I'd like to uh, just, you know, suggest, I'm going to use this form to do this, is just say, um, it, sit down with your team, uh, sketch everything out. Um, I think a combination of pictures and then narrative uh, together uh, are, are the best way to be able to explain uh, the concepts of how things are routed, connected, uh, signal flow uh, to others so that they have the ability to go back and troubleshoot when things go wrong. So th those are really the, the, those I think are the main points uh, for me of uh, things that we've learned as we uh, gone ahead and started our journey through uh, hybrid services. Um, you know, we're still working it out. Uh, we're, what I should say is we're refining things. I, I don't think you can ever say you're actually finished. Um, it, we, we can get to, certainly we get to the point where uh, we have our mixing console set up so that we've got a scene recall to get us to the basic service. 
and you know levels are relatively set for different microphones but they're not because depending on who's using microphone is going to have uh is going to affect the relative levels of uh, speech heard in the system so you're you're always going to have to make adjustments it's good that you can get to some baseline place to start um and you're always going to i think be in a position where that baseline you get to that from that point that's where you need to start using your ears and listening um and you're going to need to use your ears and listen not only to uh, what you're doing in the room you're going to need to listen to what you're sending to the far end you're going to need to listen to what's coming from the far end because you're also going to need to uh, be able to troubleshoot when there are problems in other locations i i think you know russ mentioned uh hearing some echo uh and i just want to reiterate um that if you're hearing yourself echo back in your room the problem's not your system the problem's at the other end it means somebody is an echo canceling um and you know so things like that are uh, you know they're going to part and parcel to successfully operating the system and delivering you know a great experience for your congregation we're we're we're, we're here to serve the group we volunteer to uh make sure that everybody has a has a great worship experience in the sanctuary and outside of the sanctuary and that's pretty much my piece are, are there any uh there are any questions marty um well we have uh um we have graham who is uh complimenting and uh uh, reinforcing the wise advice to have documentation because their tech lead is expectedly in the hospital this weekend. Oh no! Yeah, right. And so it's it's nice that they have uh, apparently they have some system guides in place, and so that's right. very fortunate. Yeah, excellent, excellent point. <clears throat> Anybody else? Um, so that was very uh, very comprehensive. Go ahead, Leo. I was going to say with Jay, I mean, it's, you feel like it's the first, it's just, it's getting that first step of getting back in the room is just, and, and you feel like, oh, everything, I sort of remember how we used to do some yeah. of this. I mean, it must feel like Jay picking up some, one of those guitars behind you that you haven't touched for ages and go, mm -hmm. um, I think I know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it does feel like that. It, 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 no, that's great, Leo. It, it is like that. And, you know, we went in twice during the day. Uh, we, we've every, so our, our services happen at 10 a.m. Sunday. Uh, we go in on Saturday afternoon uh, and with our remote participants, with our in um, sanctuary participants, we run through the service. I mean, you know, we, we don't do everything that we don't play all the songs through, et cetera, but we run through the service so that we, we make sure we have a sound check for everybody on the far end. Um, we make sure that we have the balances right. We, you know, we, that, that we have a good feel for how we're going to execute it on Sunday. And that's, I mean, that, that's critical. We didn't used to do that. I mean, pre COVID we'd show up on, on Sunday morning and you know maybe an hour before the service we we everybody go through their piece um and then you know we'd be ready you know i guess technically doors open uh you know about about you know 9 30 or, or 20 of and that's what we do uh, with the virtual service um I, you know there are more parts and pieces now that it's it's hybrid um uh, more things to pay attention to more things to go wrong um frankly um so for those of you who are, and, and I'm particularly Russ, I'm, I'm looking at you, um, you know, you had new equipment to learn in order for you to go in and, and start doing this work and you got your hands on and you did it. Um, the more things you incorporate at one time and, and you know, I, I would imagine probably increases anxiety uh, about, you know, how things are gonna work um you know so i i'm 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 thinking you you probably got your hands on quite a bit uh before you actually had to use the gear right uh yeah i think i think i understand what you're saying and 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 i'll just toss one thing in there right the what i have been thinking of as we 
go on this journey, as Leo has said, uh, is that getting into it that um, while the uh, using the applications to like OBS and so on to run things, as I'm sure is a marvelous way to do it, uh, but it felt to me, especially not being you know an expert myself, that right. having some hands-on buttons and stuff was actually not only a way for me to begin to under to, to learn it, but mm -hmm. also that I could show somebody else. Right. Um, and so, so that's part of what you know the way that I've been thinking about it. But but you, you know you nailed it. Uh, and and by the way, I, I want to just mention Jay, you're the one who explained mix minus to me in a way I could understand it uh, once upon a time. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Sure. Can I add one other thing, by the way, because you know we you were talking about documentation, and, and that's great. Um, you know, in our situation with our congregation, uh, the minister is uh, uh, does three out of four Sundays, approximately, let's say, and then usually it's a lay uh, leader who uh, who does leads a service on that other day. Also, uh, she's going to the minister is going to be on sabbatical for several months, uh, beginning in November. And uh, this caused us to come up with uh, another form, and that form uh, basically is is because uh, I do a script before each service. Sure, I get an order of service, you know, from the minister, and then I do a script about okay, this is what we're going to do. Here's where I think the camera cuts are, and where they think I think they're going to be, you know, and so on. Mm -hmm. We've added to that now to have a form that needs to get filled out so that um, so that the person who's replacing me has an understanding of, of what's going to happen in that sure. service. You know, everything from um, what the media is, where that person's going to be, you know, and so on. So that after that gets filled out, not only does it cause the, the service leader to think their way through that, but it also you end up with something that the, the, app or the operator can, you know, use as well. Definitely important to do. We have, yeah. a, we have, a, we have a binder that has um, sleeves in it with, you know, things like how to turn on the console. And, and funny enough, we went through this routine, somebody is just refreshing themselves and uh, the, they turned on the system and the last thing they did that was turn on the console, I said, stop, what are you doing? Console is gonna be on first it, and then it's gonna be, you know, so the, the old adage, the amplifiers are, are the last thing to turn on and first thing to turn off our book had it documented it backwards. So we discovered that and rearranged it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, these are, this is, this is really good information and advice for everybody. Um, documentation is really important. The, the technical documentation that shows how different, all the different pieces of equipment fit together and are wired together and what does what you know which which device performs which functions and then there's the 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 run of show that russ was talking about absolutely you know, um which is important part of the planning process for every service and has to begin with the planning at the planning meetings between the clergy and the worship team and those meetings should include the technical director um, because the technical director is the the person who is qualified to determine what is possible and what it would take to do the impossible um, and to make sure that there are the enough people assigned to you know every service who are trained and uh, familiar with the equipment to do the jobs that they're assigned to do um, Jay, how many people did you say you have running or, or anticipate? So, uh, so, so right now, the, you know, as it is now, we have uh, we have three people um, running. Uh, well, three people running. There's somebody at the mixing console, somebody who's handling the uh, media playback, uh, OBS or you know PowerPoint, etc. Um, we have somebody who's acting as the uh, as the host and their job is to mute uh, and unmute remote participants. So our, when we were doing this completely remote, it was two people. It's somebody called AV presenter and somebody called AV host. Now that we're, now that we're uh, back in the sanctuary, we've got three people adding the mixing console. 
at some point, you know, I personally, I know where I would love to go. I would love to get to a point where we have, uh, you know, three, three video cameras and not doing the switching in OBS, have somebody handling camera remote and camera switching as the uh, as another uh, as another position. Now, mm -hmm. when when that will happen, I, I couldn't possibly tell you. Um, you know, it's again, it's going to be it's a it's it's a money it's a money and personal personnel issue, and you know, recruiting technical staff when when you need three people every service, um, and you want to rotate people. We've had this conversation. People need to get a break. They need to get away. Um, you really need to build up a, a technical staff, you know, of at least a half a dozen people, uh, so that you can rotate them in and out. And they're going to have to be cross trained. Everybody really needs to be able to fulfill uh, every role. So that's a handful. Um, the more, uh, you know, the the more complexity, the more people we we add the technology and the people, so that we can deliver a more seamless service, which seems like it doesn't make sense. But in the same token, if you're designing a computer operating system, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, be really simple and easy to use, you're probably holding an awful lot more code that's uh, um, involved in putting it together than, you know, something that just says, hey, you're going to do the grunt work with a command line, we're not going to make it pretty and fancy. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's that, that those things are all kind of, uh, they're kind of uh, intertwined. I thought it was pretty innovative um, how you were able to arrange your computer to have two different outputs, you know, that have di different signals on them. You know, I, I wasted, I, I think, a fair amount of time trying to do this with a single USB connector. Mm -hmm. um, our, the, the Tessera Forte interface supports eight channels of audio on USB. You need to have drivers installed, which we have on our, our website that you can install on your laptop for Windows. The problem was all the Windows applications don't necessarily recommend them, re recognize and use them. So we couldn't set it up so that Zoom had channels one and two and uh, OBS audio had channels three and four. So we spent a lot of time going back and forth trying to work make this work out with one USB cable. And, you know, at, at some point, all right, this isn't working. What's plan B? Plan B was using just a, an analog output out of the computer to, to get the, uh, the other uh, uh, audio pair. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, I, mi I missed it. Show. But go ahead. Jay, just, just very quickly, which mixer? I missed it. So uh, the, On the or, USB. So, so this would be... Um, from the laptop, we're, we're going yep, to yep. our Tessera Forte DSP. The DSP yep. supports eight channels of audio on USB. Yeah. What yep. we couldn't do was get the computer to route to, you know, some combination of channel. So one and two, for example, would be Zoom. Three and four would be OBS audio playback. And, and we couldn't get okay. that to work. Yeah. What what mixer are you using? The our mixing console is uh it's an Allen and Heath GLD. Oh, there's mm -hmm. a that well there's one more piece of this. And mm -hmm. we were using voice meter at, within the OBS computer so that we could do software routing a signal. Mm -hmm. And we had some issues with voice meter and we wanted to get away from it. Um so a lot of this effort was Okay, how can we get rid of voice meter, do multiple multi-channel audio, and get these two fader controls for Zoom and program audio? That was our objective, and it took us three hours to finally get around and get it done. Only was, three hours. Yeah, three hours. It was always spent days no, no, no. on this. That was three yeah. hours on top of the two hours we were there rehearsing. Yeah, it was we, a long day. Uh, that that has been the biggest thing that we've had time or not the biggest it's been one of the biggest challenges um we eventually found the solution on the um behringer and midas desks mm -hmm. was the older version of the driver the older version of the driver exposes that. yeah exposes eight channels to the computer 
and you literally can then just choose you can then select which which right. bus you're going off but the, it's only on the older older drivers so, there is other ways of doing it but it's um as you say marty maybe for the after show there is ways around it but it's one, one not... of them that occurred to me leo was to use dante you yeah know, uh, we, and we actually a, we've got a dante card in the mixing console oh right but then there's the, the, the end of, if you got, that's it dante Stan dante computer, would have done it Stan well dante from the computer, from the computer okay we need to explain to hold on hold on hold on we need to one of you needs to explain what dante is sure um so so dante is a digital audio uh transport it uh it runs on gigabit ethernet and it will allow you to move 64 channels bi-directionally on gigabit um it it so it, this is a I think Dante is uh, it, it is uh, uh, it, it is uh, routable, um, and it's there. You know the the cost of Dante is built into when you buy the hardware. Um, if you buy something with, that incorporates Dante, it's probably a couple of hundred dollars added to the hardware for the Dante chipset. Uh, there is software uh, that can run on a laptop uh, Dante uh, via VIA. Um, and that'll allow you, you're shaking your head. There's another, there's another, there's yeah, another. There's Don, other, Dante other. virtual, uh, sound card, Dante yeah. via everybody I know that's used it eventually turns it off, but Dante uh, virtual yeah. sound okay, card, virtual sound one. card. I'm sorry, virtual sound card. That's so what right. I'd like you to do is can take your, uh, connect your, your computer's wired ethernet port. Dante is not a transport that works on wireless ethernet it needs it needs it needs a gigabit um uh well it, it should have a gigabit it can run in less but you don't want to do that your your band you're not going to be able to do a lot with it At any rate what you could do is you could route the route the audio back and forth using dante instead of usb um there's certainly some effort and work to doing that and if you're moving computers in and out of the sound booth you're going to need to have that that virtual sound card on every computer and that's a license and there's there's a cost to that and then there's the routing and setup using using dante control so i'm throwing it out there leo because yeah there you're you're right there are other ways to do this and that would have been another way to do this uh but not in the time frame that i had i think that's the whole point with all of this and russ touched on it and we've others have touched on it You've got to do what you can do to get each surface, each element, you get better and better, or maybe right. sometimes you don't actually. Some of the some of them you walk out, okay, uh, that's it. Uh, please turn the lights off because I'm going home. Well, <laughs> but uh, well, the reality, <laughs> the reality the with some of the yeah of USB over Dante is you don't have to configure a network switch for USB no exactly but, but you know th there's lots of ways of doing it um right. for those of us that we where we've talked about ndi which is the picture over the network right dante is the equivalent for the audio over the network yep. um there are some differences i'm but i'm not going to go into the edge cases at the well, moment they're, they're the two they're... standards used majority at the, the moment I would say that's fair enough. This is probably we're at five after nine, and this would be probably yeah. the segue to after hours, Marty. Yes, it is. And so that's it then. Hey, I want to thank our panelists and our guests today for such uh, beautiful conversations. Um, this is a, you know, even if you had an unlimited budget, a blank check, you got all the equipment you think you need, got it all configured, had an integrator do it, you know what? It's still going to be a continuing evolution, you know? Um, somebody said it, Jay said it, Leo said it, you're never done. If you're done, you're done. I mean, there's no reason for you to be there. Um, even in professional broadcasting, things are always getting refined because you do things a certain way, you have a certain program, you have certain goals, certain accomplishments, and then they change. Because if they don't change, it gets boring, right? 
And you can do the same thing every week, same way, same time, same station, and it just becomes uninteresting. You know, how many ministers give the sermon the exact same way? Every, you know, the story is not always the same. The music is not always the same. You know, you have to get creative because that's what keeps people's interest. So it's a continuing evolution. And we don't have unlimited budgets, and we start out with what we can, and then we see how well it works, what, what could be better, and we, um, you know, we, we, we get convinced that we could do better, and there's a reason and a goal for us to do better, is that we make our congregants happier, they become more interested, we get more members, we improve our product, and, you know, this is how, this is how things are done. And this is how we all, um, you know, we progress, right? So um, we hope you've enjoyed this time together. Perhaps you found it informative and enlightening, enriching, energizing, and motivating. Uh, watch the Discord for agendas about upcoming shows, uh, where you can find recordings of past shows to review, um, special announcements about upcoming events. And, um, and, you know, we are exploring all this new ground, and we are making it our own. So um, do good. Do good. Our service continues.